the latest humanoid creations for physical labor, the giant robot Arcax, a humanoid pilot robot from South Korea, smart lenses that charge from the user's tears, and other amazing future technologies are already existing today in this video. Let's start today's video with a new robot named Apollo, introduced by the company Aptronic. At first glance, it's a cute and friendly robot, but its real goal is to replace humans in the workforce. Standing at a height of 173 centimeters and weighing 73 kilograms, this humanoid android is primarily designed for heavy physical labor. It can work for four hours without a battery change and carry loads weighing up to 25 kilograms. Over the past eight years, Aptronic has developed several humanoid robots and a couple of exoskeletons. Unlike their previous projects, Robot Apollo is created with a clear focus on commercialization. This requires considering aspects that were not necessary before, such as miniaturization, ease of maintenance, reliability, and cost effectiveness. As a result, engineers decided to build a minimally viable robot that can be customized according to the customer's needs. This robot aims to become the iPhone of robots, high performance, user friendly, and multifunctional. Currently, the company has already completed two such robots and is constructing four more. Despite Aptronic's focus on developing solutions for logistics and manufacturing, the robot Apollo serves as a versatile assistant. Developers and partners can expand Apollo's functionality, applying it in construction, the oil and gas industry, electronics manufacturing, retail home delivery, elderly care, and various other fields. Almost all humanoid robots entering the market are designed for handling standard containers, boxes, and crates. This is no coincidence, as few people are willing to perform routine, physically demanding tasks unless the cost is prohibitively high. Robots like Apollo could find demand in the market. According to the developers, in the long term, humanoid robots should cost less than $50,000. Androids should be priced similarly to cars, but are likely to be cheaper because their production requires less raw materials. The Japanese company Sabame has unveiled a 4.5-meter robot named Arcax, which can be purchased for $2.7 million. The machine can be controlled by a human operator and can work in two modes. In robot mode, you can control all the moving parts of the robot, while in car mode, Arcax assumes a more stable posture and can move quite quickly. This 3.5-ton robot is made of iron and aluminum alloy and is powered by a 300-volt DC electric vehicle battery. The robot can move at a speed of 2 km per hour in robot mode and 10 km per hour in car mode. The pilot controls the robot from the cabin using joysticks, pedals, and a touch panel. The robot is equipped with a total of 4 monitors and 9 cameras. It can also be controlled remotely. Arcax's body has 26 degrees of freedom across its joints, and the front and rear wheels have suspensions for rocking. The robot's hands are fully functional and can hold objects weighing up to 15 kilograms. The creator is targeting a wealthy international buyers and plans to produce at least five robots. A very interesting study was recently published by the United Nations Organization. According to the research, artificial intelligence and humanoid robots associated with it will have a more significant impact on women's employment. Scientists have concluded that despite the superhuman abilities attributed to it, Generative artificial intelligence will not be able to replace humans, but will instead automate part of their responsibilities. Moreover, the greatest potential for technology application lies in the field of so-called office work. Their artificial intelligence may take on about a quarter to a third of all tasks. Since the vast majority of people employed in this sector are women, they will be the most affected. Engineers at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology recently unveiled the world's first humanoid robot pilot with artificial intelligence, named Pibot. It can be placed in the pilot's seat of an aircraft without any modifications to the cockpit and launched for autonomous flight. The robot can operate the controls manually and memorize flight charts from all over the world, as well as emergency protocols. This should allow Pivot, equipped with GPT chat technology and cameras for cabin analysis, to fly without errors and respond to various situations faster than human pilots. Additionally, using its cameras, the robot pilot can analyze the environment beyond the pilot's cabin. We look forward to the first real flight of Pivot, which they also plan to start selling to civilians and military in 2025. The company Deep Robotics introduced its humanoid robot for the first time at a recent robot exhibition in China. 
By the way, we released a separate video on this channel about this exhibition where a huge number of next generation humanoid robots were presented. Unfortunately, there is currently no information available about the new deep robotics robot except for its name, Wukong 4, which hints that there are at least three previous versions of the robot in deep robotics laboratories. Based on the lack of data, it appears that the robot is still in the early stages of development and doesn't have any significant features to boast about yet. Its existence only proves that the trend for humanoids is gaining momentum. Somatic offers a hard-working cleaning robot as a service for $1,000 per month. The machine will be delivered to any building where it has enough space for accommodation with access to charging and water, after which the robot will work autonomously for 40 hours a week. By the way, in terms of cost, this is much cheaper than human labor. The robot can open and close doors on its own, use elevators, spray disinfectant wherever needed, lift toilet lids, and then wipe everything dry. The only thing that needs to be done in advance is to walk around the building with a set of sensors that the company sends. Ride the elevators, open doors, enter the bathrooms that need cleaning. This allows the developers to create a map of the building with video and 3D depth data to introduce the robot to it in a simulation and create a work plan for it. If the robot finds something out of the ordinary during work, it will simply take a photo and send it by email to the live janitor. It seems better not to check the message during lunch. However, the service itself looks very tempting. It would be interesting to know how many robots the company has already managed to employ. Let's move on to other technology news. Frankie Zapata, known for his invention of flyboard flights, has unveiled his own developed single-seat electric vertical takeoff and landing hybrid called Air Scooter. The prototype has a cruising speed of 80 km per hour, a maximum speed of 100 km per hour, and can stay in the air for up to two hours thanks to its hybrid drive system. It uses four large propellers powered by turbocharged internal combustion engines for primary propulsion. For stabilization, there are eight small electrically powered propellers. According to official classification, the air scooter, weighing only 115 kilograms, belongs to the ultralight aircraft, which exempts it from full certification and the pilot from requiring a license. It is expected that operating this aircraft will be as easy as operating a standard drone. Elon Musk tested and posted the final version of the Cybertruck, which has gone into production. Musk called it the best product in Tesla's history. It can be assumed that the deliveries of the electric pickup will begin according to the previously announced schedule, which means by the end of the third quarter of this year. However, the final specifications and price for the Cybertruck have not yet been published. India has become the fourth country to successfully land its spacecraft on the moon. The automatic interplanetary station Chandrayaan-3, which launched on July 14 from a spaceport in southern India, successfully reached the lunar surface. The Indian rover has already begun searching for water. Chandrayaan-3 repeated the flight of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2, which ended in a crash. But this time it took into account and corrected the mistakes. India's success can be attributed to extensive reforms in landing strategy, implemented after the Chandrayaan-2 crash. The algorithms involved in calculating the speed in real time have been redesigned. The landing zone has been increased. The module supports have been strengthened and much more. Scientists have long dreamed of smart contact lenses that could give people superhuman abilities, from improving vision to displaying important information in front of the user's eyes. However, the technology faces a significant challenge, miniaturizing all the components, including the battery, the biggest question is related to the power source, which must sustain the device's operation for an extended period. Otherwise, the idea does not make any sense. Researchers from Singapore seem to have found a solution. They have developed a battery that is charged by the user's tears. It provides a minimum of 12 hours of continuous operation. The device is only half a millimeter thick and contains water and a coating made of a special enzyme. When the flat flexible battery is immersed in the basal tear fluid covering our eyes, the enzyme reacts with the sodium chloride ions in this fluid, generating an electrical charge. The battery can withstand up to 200 charge discharge cycles. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Also on our channel, there are many other interesting videos. See you next time.